Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here tonight, live from the SEC studios, if it's September 5th and uh, any other date. Of course, we're not live, but please feel free to call in with your comments or questions at 651-747-3838 uh, or if you don't want to do that, email me at speechlessmn at gmail.com and uh, we'll get back to you sometime. <laughs> okay, um, tonight on the show a lot of video about the Ray Woodstrand situation and what I did is I just took clips that can get somebody in trouble for editing as you see happen but what I think I've done is I've placed them in context and uh, I'm trying not to take anything out of context but just uh, I, I want you to know that you can go and on the video you'll see uh, M, uh, CD4 MN conservative um, website that you can go to to watch the whole meeting that took place in St. Paul about the Ray Woodstrand situation. But what I did and what we're going to spend a lot of time on the show is go through um, the the editing that I did was what what are the crimes that are taking place in the community and and part of that is how the police are responding uh, whose fault it is because that was a big segment of the discussion <clears throat> you know who's doing this and who's going after the landlords who's going after uh, holding the parents accountable there's a section on that uh, and then there's a section on solutions uh, or the response that came back to the citizens. And so none of these things are lying, lining up as far as the, the, in what I've edited. It's just a whole block on solutions, a whole block on how to, how to deal with uh, crime in your area, uh, how to deal with uh, or who's, who's to blame, and then what are the crimes that are taking place. And then we're going to talk about uh, the emphasis that was put on by Mayor Coleman about the economic uh, input that's been going on into the community to make it a more livable community, a better community, uh, who knows. And then we'll uh, get down to uh, some extended conversation in, in relationship to uh, you know, hearing from the beginning to the end a person and their presentation and their response by the uh, police chief and uh, the, the police officers and the uh, uh, mayors, um, what, they, what they had to say on, on a few of the uh, cases that were brought before them. And then at the end, we'll get down to what I think needs to be addressed, uh, what I think the only solution can be. Um, of course, accountability is a part of the process. It's the way our government was formed uh, with the checks and balances that are going on. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get my input on that towards the end. Um, other thing that's happening, <coughs> uh, just, you just have to notice this. I just draw it to attention. I, I love women, uh, have utmost respect for women. Uh, but like usual, there's a problem going on in our society that does not acknowledge that women commit violence uh, or women do bad things, that the nature of women is, is basically good, <coughs> um, where men are just, you know, out of control uh, abusers, you know. And so an allegation is the, is the evidence of the crime. Uh, however, if you've noticed in the news, uh, you had a, in the last week a woman commit murder, uh, commit murder, uh, killed a man. Um, a lady admitted to embezzlement uh, over three hundred thousand dollars from her church or from uh, the uh, denomination that she worked for. Uh, there was a bank robbery done by a woman. Uh, and another woman uh, was engaged in child abuse. All I'm saying is we got to level the playing field here. And there was another one in the news where just yesterday. Yeah, we're, we're uh, getting some other information a here. Teen stabbed her mother in the face, and in the a, a girl stabbed her mother in the face. 
78 times it said? 78 times? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's human nature. And when we say we got to protect women and children from abuse, and when you're down at the legislature, that's all they talk about. Yes, we do. We have to protect women and children from abuse, but we also have to protect men from abuse. It's, we can't leave them out of the formula and out of the equation. Uh, it, it, it can't be done. Otherwise, you won't solve the problem. And the big story, and I have yet to do research on this, but I need to call the, the police station, talk, uh, the county prosecutor, and find out who is, what has happened to these two girls that started the fight that led to the mob that led to Ray Widstrand being beat. There's been no mention as to whether they've been arrested, or whether they've been charged, uh, or what their situation is. It's, it's critical. Without that fight, it's not likely that these people would have gathered where they gathered um, and, um, and incited the riot. And you're going to hear that. I believe you're going to hear that in some of the clips that we're going to show is that um, there have been a group, uh, groups of girls, gangs getting together and, you know, uh, causing problems. Um, the police have been trying to run them down. It's caught seven, um, you know, out of the 30 or so. They caught seven. The rest got away. You know, you just can't. It's a large number. It's it's hard to control. Uh, so th there's a problem going on with the women uh, in St. Paul, too, of course, everywhere. And it's the human problem. And, of course, if you've watched my show enough, you'll know that I don't think that people are basically good. I don't think anybody, including myself, has a basic good nature. It's not scriptural. It's not biblical. It's not there by example in our whole society. It's just not there that we're basically good. The uh, Bible's very clear. There's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, you know, we all fit into that category. And so we have to treat it that way. If we think people are basically good, then we're not. We're going to overlook the foundation and the problem uh, that there is. So then um, our founding fathers tried to put in checks and balances because they knew that that was their religious beliefs uh, about people. Therefore, they tried to build in a check and balance system into our form of government. Uh, so. And that gets into the whole school problem. But let's see some videos. So the first uh, video here is uh, people just saying the crimes that have been happening in their neighborhood. So let's watch that. I had 30 to 50 kids go into one of my vacant units and have a party. The police came after I started shooting them all out. They co congregated outside. The police made no arrest. They did a breaking and entry. I've got pictures of some of the people, but the police did nothing to discourage them from doing this to somebody else. My son had a gun stuck in his face during a robbery of T-Mobile at Cedar Square. My neighbor had four tires removed off of his truck while it was parked in the alley. My car was just robbed. I'll tell you an event just happened two weeks ago. There were 30 girls. Absolutely. That were there. They walked right by, in fact, ran by the Eastern District Police Station. And we were able to detain seven to nine of them, and that was it. The rest of them were gone. I was a victim of a crime. Actually, my family was a victim of a crime. We were beat, dragged across the street. This happened in May, the beginning of May. Where's my justice? Nobody made a big deal about it. I get the police report and it makes me look like I'm a criminal. I have not committed a crime. I've lived in this neighborhood for 18 years. I've vested myself in this neighborhood. I work in this neighborhood. I, I want to know what the police are going to do to make me trust you so that you, if I need help, you're going to show up to my defense and make sure that I don't get killed. You know, I've been held up three times beaten. It's all happened to me. Um, 
The problem is, is that uh, for the last, since like July 4th, there's a house that's been targeted across the street from me that's been shot at three times. I've been threatened with bodily harm the last two weeks. I've had garbage thrown at me and hit me. And I We've had cars get rear-ended. We've had fights going on outside of our house at 1 o'clock in the morning. Multiple calls from our neighbors as well as myself and my wife. Nobody comes. No police come at all. And my grandson in the second row up there was shocked when he and his friends went to the fireworks. And they were coming home and there was 20 to 30 of them. In the process of that, Jesse ended up going to the hospital and he was petrified. I you said these people camp out on her, um, her porch. I took the number down on the way here, 594 and 588 case. She lives at 594. These aren't drug dealers in her porch. They're just people that are loitering. I've reported it. I put it on the Facebook, Eastside Facebook page. I have called District 5. I've called the police the, at 588. And I'm sorry if anybody lives there, but it's a drug house. And it's like constant, what I'm... I had a, a, a riot that I reported on the first 70 degree day that we had in the Salvation Army parking lot where uh, Mo Allison was later killed uh, in uh, July. We didn't uh, have a meeting after that. Then the next 70 degree day, we had a riot in front of my home. Some of them have actually stopped and challenged your officers, and that is not a good thing. All right. Um, <laughs> a lot of bad things going on uh, in Eastside St. Paul. Um, just a couple comments, and uh, again, uh, you can... Um, Please feel free to call in uh, the show here. The number will be up in a bit. Um, this one lady said, where's my justice? I got beat up, and I have not committed a crime, but the police made it look like I was the criminal uh, or something to that effect. I've seen this take place. I've heard officers say, if you report this, if you want a case number, then we're going to arrest you. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, now, that's not in St. Paul, other police jurisdictions. In other words, you know, they don't want to do the work, it, and it's a trick they play in, with you, is they'll take a complaint, but you realize in taking that complaint, they don't have to do anything, okay? And uh, what you do then is once you've given them the complaint, you say, I'd like a case number. And then, the, and then you take the case number, and they don't think, okay, that's as far as it goes. Even if you, they give you the case number, if nothing goes in, they don't have to write anything up. Once you get that case number, then you go and say, I will be filing a report. And now they have to write something up. And that's when you start seeing the table start turning, uh, where because you made the complaint, you know, now they got to do some work, and they're not real happy about that. They'd rather just have things go away. Uh, so, um, and, and they make you look bad, even though you're the one filing the complaint. So, it, I mean, they're, I don't have any problem with what these people are saying if, when they're saying this is how uh, they get treated. And we're going to see a little bit more of this. Uh, can't I couldn't edit it to get everything just right. If you've got a comment or question, 651-747-3838. This was supposed to deal with Ray Wittstrand, the, the man that worked at the studios here, uh, who got beat up. And it ended up being a lot about other people's issues. But in in overall, it needed to be said because of the crime that was taking place and the problems that were there. So this next video, what we're going to show is a edited um, segment of people saying who the where where the problem is, what the people and the systems that need to be fixed. And of course, you've already heard the police needed to be fixed. The police were part of the problem. Um, all right, so let's watch this video. Hi, my name is Steve Shouse. I'm a 15-year resident of the East Side. My wife is a 40-year resident of the East Side. Uh, we've seen a trend of, of non-response uh, to calls in our neighborhood. And I feel like if it's on Payne Avenue, 
then they'll come. But if it's on Edgerton, where we live, north of Maryland, maybe they'll show up in 45 minutes. Maybe they won't. It is. Our officers are doing a great job, but it doesn't seem like they're being backed up by the administration. Where are you? You say that you're here, you're not. What about holding the storefronts responsible that let these kids congregate? What are you doing about making the parents responsible for letting their children roam the street? What about our children that don't feel safe in their own neighborhood? What are you gonna do about those parents that let these kids run the streets? I'm a responsible parent, why aren't they? I don't understand how somebody can rent a home, you buy a home, invest, where are the landlords? Why aren't they being held responsible? So far, after three phone calls to the mayor's office, I have not yet received a call back. Just about the same response that we got from the police department. The police department have not contacted us yet, the one, the investigation unit. And folks, we have got to do a better job. And frankly, there's one other point I'd like to make, is that uh, we need a longer term strategy. You know, we need a strategy with our children. We need to do some intervention and prevention work with our children. We need our school board to be engaged in doing something that is proactive, that is preventing people from joining gangs and not allowing this to continue. What are you guys doing to enforce the curfew? Uh, I feel like the media is 97% responsible for this thing here. What about parent intervention services? <coughs> where are those resources for parents? And where is our media? Where is St. Paul Pioneer Press talking about the good things happening on the east side? What the schools are going to be doing to make our kids safer and helping them, I mean, making the transit back and forth to schools. I mean, and I'm surprised that this, nobody from the school board is up there. It's very apparent that we have a crime problem here and perhaps a very serious gang problem. That You know what? The police need to hold the parents accountable. We need to hold the parents accountable. But worse than that, my daughter was riding with me and the police officers that answered the phone when we were trying to find out anything were rude to her and they had the same attitude that some of those gang members have. The kids over there, when I wake up in the morning, they're there in front of my house and they're on my porch. When I go to sleep at night, they're on my porch. The police, they arrest them, so they say, but when they let them go and take them around the corner, they come back around. I call the police like the Sarge tell me, and all they do is take them around the corner, take, them, take their dope or whatever. When they're gambling, they take them, give them a ticket, let them go. So what's the purpose of that? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, you had the police weren't, weren't doing well. A lot of complaints about the police. Then you had the administration. Uh, police were good, but the administration wasn't holding them uh, accountable. Uh, storefront owners, parents, uh, landlords, the mayor, uh, the school board, um, curfews not being enforced, the media is having a problem, Pen parent parental intervention services wasn't doing their job, the schools weren't doing the jobs, uh, gangs uh, were, were the problem, crime problem, kids were a problem. Um, yeah, <laughs> at, at least, you know, the, the people that said the kids were the problem, yeah, the kids are the problem, okay? But the only reason kids are a problem is because of adults. And when Greg Copeland there said, uh, ourselves, ourselves is a big issue here. Uh, we're the problem. And we got to have a long-term strategy as well as a short-term one because it's so severe on East Side. But we got to have a long-term strategy too. Of course, we're not even looking at talking about solutions yet here. Um, we're just kind of laying the base as to uh, what people are saying, here's the crimes, who's to blame, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, you know, so solutions that, uh, well, actually, we're going to show a video of that coming up here pretty quick. It's not really solutions, but 
part of it was, yeah, part of it solutions, but part of it was telling people how to interact with the police, and which is important to know, and and you need to know this. But you know, like most people, you know, I'm not I'm not going to know this. I don't even want to find it out until it affects me. Well, you need to know this now because when it happens to you, you need to be able to deal with it now. Okay, we got a phone call. So, uh, caller, uh, welcome to the show. Do you have a comment or question? Tim Kinley, thanks for talking about this issue because it's a very serious issue over on the east side, and this is just the latest incident of issues that have been ignored for years. You know, right now it looks like the uh, city paper has, you know, basically dropped talking about it, and they're more interested in just... Uh, you know, they, the paper hit it for what five days after it happened. Right and now, it's happened, and they've kind of kind of pretend like it's. You know, we can hardly remember it happening. And of course, uh, uh, you know, of course, the neighbors in the area, from the best of my knowledge, nobody's heard no more information on what about anything that, that that occurred. It's like, well, you know, we came to your meeting, and you know, we uh, we talked, and now everything's better. We put the bandaid on it. The people this time in that area don't believe it. They've seen too much. And, you know, despite the paper and the mayor wanting to continue to run his campaign, you know, we're in the great city. The city of St. Paul is great. It's great living. The people over on the east side don't believe it. And, you know, it's good that you're talking about what's really going on instead of just running some sort of campaign uh, like the mayor and his political boys down at City Hall and, you know, their their press secretaries paper the uh, city paper are trying to do because it's a big and a serious problem and you know people feel that uh it's going the way of detroit they can go and pretend we're living in a great city and everybody wants to move to the great city but you know if you go out and talk to people they're saying wow you know we see a lot of cars the the mayor and uh, the guys running the city put a lot of uh, police cars just running around but that's no solution that's not they don't even believe that's a temporary solution well, you know, what can we do to keep, I mean, and they pretty much drop Ray, uh, you know, where are we going to get any reports and what happened to Ray? Well, I think Maybe. that, I, well, I was going to bring mention what where, how Ray's doing right now, but um, you make a, ra- a really good point, a really good issue here, is there needs to be follow-up here, there needs to be another meeting. You know that, like they had, where this video came from. There needs to be another one now, saying, "Here's where things are at," and and maybe instead of having the political speeches at the beginning, uh, maybe some more citizen input. But I, well, I suppose now they should be telling the community, "Here's where we're at. Here's the people you need to watch out for. Here's who we're targeting." They should be telling people. Um, you know, in one sense, you want to catch the criminals, but in the other sense, you know, and you need to keep something secret. But maybe they should say, "Here's the bad people. Here's the people we're well, looking out after." The, a lot of people believe that. I think that from all these other areas where they've chased people out of, you know, around the Twin Cities, right. they've all ended up on the east side of St. Paul. And yet, the mayor and all the council members and all the all those high paid administrators, they're not going around talking to people one on one. They're not sending email updates around. They're not in any way commuting, uh, communicating with people, having no meetings. And, of course, I have to thank uh, you mostly for actually having the video because I believe without your video, so thank you for arranging to having that meeting taped. Without your video, the Pioneer Press would have all played on this, uh, the city paper would have played on the story, the mayor's comments. We are all together. We're right. all together, and that's it. There's no more comments. Uh, people were, uh, the mayor uh, charmed everybody, and oh, they yeah. were happy that we're all together. And because you have the video, the public out there actually gets to see what really happened at that meeting. Yeah, well, this is, a little, yeah, this is a little bit of a different story here, and that's why I want to tell people, um, when you watch the video again, look at MNCD4 Conservative, Google that, and uh, the whole show will be on there, so you want to watch it there to get the whole perspective of what took place. Um, but yeah, I and mean, I otherwise it's not seen. Right, I know that the uh, St. Paul uh, Neighbor Network sent some cables down there, but I believe that their video did not appear, their replay did not appear until after yours appeared, and I believe that their video probably would not be appeared, there would only be clips out there of their video, if you had not had your video on 
So, uh, you know, uh, three cheers, and people need to applaud you for the work you did because you actually pushed the city to, uh, to show that they weren't going to uh, cut up their video into just uh, clips yeah. that were all unrepresentative of what yeah. really happened. Well, uh, thank you, caller, and I got to thank one of my producers. I actually had a live show that night, so he went down and filmed it and uh, brought it back to us. So without uh, one of our producers filming that, it wouldn't have happened. Um, but we definitely wanted to get it filmed, and that's why, you know, we don't have a whole lot of staff here. Let me put it that way. So if we lose one person, we lose half our staff. <laughs> and so, uh, but it was so important, we got him down there. Just an update on Ray uh, on his Caring Bridge account today, because um, they had removed his, uh, uh, his trachea, uh, plugged that up. The uh, tubes uh, had been pulled out of his uh, lungs, and um, they were hoping he'd be able to talk fairly soon. And they thought that because of all the tubes and stuff that was preventing him, well, he he cannot talk yet. And this has been about a week, uh, somewhere in there. Um, and he is trying to. So, you know, the brain damage is uh, severe. He can communicate. Uh, he knows what's going on uh, around him, uh, but he can't talk. And But he's working on it. So... He's improving daily. The comment was um, he's tired, uh, but s sometimes he's got more strength than others, and when he's got his strength, he's using it, which makes him more tired. Uh, but uh, brain injuries uh, are a problem, and you get that blood going in there, and it's like a stroke, you know, uh, in, in effect. Uh, so uh, he is improving. Uh, but not talking yet. So, according to the Caring Bridge account that I read, uh, so keep Ray in your prayers, and you know, the east side of St. Paul and ourselves, you know, because it's it's easy to go down a path of uh, really bad thinking, <laughs> you know, that's destructive, and uh, we need to help lift each other up so that we go don't go down that path. Okay, we got another phone call here. So, caller, do you have a comment or question? Yes, Tim, I do. I got right. a couple of uh, suggestions or maybe some investigating things that you or your reporters can do okay. as far as the police departments go. All right. Now, I, I've, I saw your video about the people that were in there complaining to the chief, and and he uh, wasn't really answering any questions and, and so on. One of the things that communities may want to do is... Like, say, um, St. Paul, for instance, is, is divided into districts, correct? I believe so. They have district councils and wards. Yes. Right. So, one thing you may want to do as an investigative reporter is go and ask some of the people in those different communities what their police officers' names are that patrol their area. That, you know, I'd be, yeah. I'd be willing to say that um, very few, if any, would know the names or shifts that their police officers work in their districts. Police departments need to be doing community policing, not reactive policing. If you do community policing and being proactive, you're going to put a dent into that crime, and you're going to be uh, better perceived and better judged by the community at large because you're going to be interactive with the people who actually live there. Right. That was one of the purposes of having the Neighborhood Watch program. Uh-huh. Was for Neighborhood Watch people to call the police to get um, get service for whatever was going on in their area. Okay. Now, what I'm hearing is, is people are calling, and they're not only not receiving that service, but they're being disrespected and blown off um, supposedly, there right. again, you know, you and I weren't there, right? So we can't cast stones at the police because right. we don't know what was going on or right. or what took place. Yes. So, what I would like to see, even here in the city of Maplewood, is for more 
community meetings, not just when a big event takes place, but say even a biweekly or even a once a week meeting where people can get together and bring in their issues to their precinct or district of their area to their local police officers that are on the street and say, look, I see this car coming at strange times during the night. Here's the license plate of that car. What the police officer does with that from there is up to them. Right. However, the community has just given that officer information that maybe that they didn't have involved right. in some burglaries happening in that area. Right. So you know that very good points. Uh, I I I agree with you wholeheartedly and. You know, it, it is a two-way street there. I mean, we have to ourselves take responsibility to get to know who our police officers are. That's on us. I mean, and 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 so, well, the, but it's also we're, we're, it's also the police need to help facilitate that. Well, that's and that was the the, the next part of my my uh, analogy here is the responsibility of the police chief yes. to set up those types of programs. Um, you got to remember, officers are followed by example. If the if the police chief isn't pushing for officers to be more community motivated, they're not going to do it. Right. And and who's going to push the police chief? It's going to be your mayor and city council. And you know, in Maplewood, we did have a uh, mayor, Diana Longry, who had citizen input, who would have a. Uh, at least once a month where the citizens can come together and she would have the city manager there and I believe the police chief would be there but not Mayor Rosbach and Kathleen Judeman and uh, they wanted to cut that stuff out and we haven't had it so they don't want some of these mayors and city council people don't want this communication to go on and but I, I will say that Diana Longry uh, she wanted it and welcomed it and had the person who oversees the police chief there. Um, but that, yes, the, the city council needs to push that if the police chief isn't doing it on their own. Absolutely. Well, it gets, it gets, it gets down to accountability. Yes. And, and uh, reality. When the citizens come in and say, this is taking place, this is taking place, this is taking place, and the police chief just gives that, you know, nonchalant nod yes 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 and the the the, the smile and that's it yeah there's there, there's no recourse saying okay we addressed your issue this is what we did right and that's what you need you need to have some closure for these people that's otherwise, right otherwise the people have distrust in the police and they say why bother calling if nothing's going to happen well i i think you summarized uh, the, the videos there with the crimes and the problems, uh, the problems that were going on. That's a very good summary uh, of the attitude the people had there that they were displaying. We can't trust you. And, good. And, and when it boils down to it, the police are the ones that you turn to in your, I mean, face it, you, you don't call the police when you're having a great day saying, hey, I'm having a great day, I think I'll call the police and let them know that. Right. It's when, it's, it's when you're in <laughs> dire straits it's when people are dead or yep. dying, yep. and and you're down on your luck, you, you know, and, and so on. That's when you call the police, and then you wonder, are they going to show up? Are they going to help me? Right. You know, do I do I need to run away when they show up? You know, are they going to you know are they going to hurt me? You know, you wouldn't believe the perception of some people in the police, and it's because of distrust. It's because of different things that have been written in the paper. Right. You know. Um, let's face it. When's the last time in the in the in the paper have you re have you read um, white youth beaten by you know minorities? Mm -hmm. You never do. It's sensationalized in the paper, you know, in the reverse all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. But anyway, thank you, Tim. Uh, all right, for thank me you. Make my comments. You and, bet. Um, great program. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yeah, very good comments there. Um, and we're, we're going to see the next video here that goes into the, um, you know, when concerns were made, here's what the police chief and some of their officers had to say about how people should deal with it. Again, you're not going to know what particular situation they were trying to deal with. 
it really doesn't matter for what I'm intending to show. It just shows you you need to know what they want you to know. All right, let's watch the video here. We ask that you reach out to a, a couple uh, different avenues you have within the police department. Our internal affairs unit investigates police misconduct. They do it thoroughly, they do it well. We also have the Police Civilian Internal Affairs Review Commission, community members that uh, look, look at these cases uh, not within the police department. So we do have checks and balances. We try to maintain a positive uh, police force and we do have those avenues. We've gone to transporting kids who live more than a half a mile from home rather than a mile, knowing that there are safety concerns. They've used Facebook. Some of these young people are actually posting very graphic things on YouTube where they're assaulting each other. Uh, and we have taken that through our gang unit because they are very, I'm mean, working them to death. Um, and they have taken that information and actually received charges of riot from the Ramsey County Attorney's Office. I can't answer that question right now, but if you have one of the contact cards, I will get your information and I will find out. Uh, they should have. Um, I can't give you a good answer right now, and I would prefer not to try and just, you know, tell you something without any kind of factual basis. So, but we do have a process in place. First of all, when you call when you call 911, those are not just so everybody knows. Those are not police officers answering the call. That that call goes to Ramsey County Dispatch Center. And they're civilian employees. So that's a that's a point that we will certainly uh, document on your case. We'll take a look at that. And we'll make sure we communicate with that the Ramsey County. Uh, communication center. As far as follow-up goes, um, we do have our investigative units here tonight. We'll make sure that uh, uh, that is followed up on uh, immediately. I'm sure that uh, our investigators are working out. We have Assistant Chief Martinez back here today. I know that uh, uh, he is uh, listening loud and clear as well. So um, again, I'm sorry that that happened. We will uh, follow up on that for sure. Again, I, I just want to say that we, we're really going after, we're, we're trying to step it up. It's one of the things that we're doing is trying to get out and inspect more of these properties uh, to go after where there's violations, to remove um, the certificate of occupancy when we can do that. If there's, and, it's, and it's not just the active drug dealing, but really going after unsightly conditions. There are a lot of places that we need to, to step up our efforts. But I think it's one of those, you know, the old broken windows theory, which is you, you go after places that, uh, that aren't being cared for because if they're not being cared for a lot of bad things that can come after that. A couple of things that we can do to, to help you immediately. We'll have our uh, uh, crime prevention person come out to your house tomorrow. If we can get you to sign some paperwork that authorizes us to arrest without your being there for trespassing, we'll get that up because we've been, we've been, and we've been making those cases. The, 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 uh, Chief Axel and Chief Smith both talked about it. There are some restraints that we have to follow. I mean, there's there's rules that we have to abide by just like everybody else as far as prosecution. So we'll increase the efforts, we'll do the best we can, but again, some crimes, we have to follow a process. Okay, the officer told my son that we already have a no trespassing for anybody that does live there. And they said if they catch anybody there that does not live there, they're gonna charge him with that. How's that gonna you know, go take effect of that? How can they charge him for that when he does not, you know, be held accountable for people that's standing out there that does not live there? If I understand your question, the officers <laughs> believe that your son is inviting him over? Yeah, but how can he control people that's standing on the sidewalk when they're there 24-7? You can't control, he can't control people that just come stand in front of the building or walking up and down the street. Those people are there 24-7. Well, that, yeah, you're correct with that point. They, they can't arrest your son for trespassing on his own house, okay? okay. That, that You just can't do that. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, they can't do that. Um, and we'll make, we'll step up the efforts. We've been working that whole case area from Payne um, uh, West, and we'll make sure that we pay special attention to your house. All right, thank you. We work as much as possible with our uh, non-governmental agencies to uh, partner with the uh, youth initiatives. We have several uh, across the city, including uh, programs like the YWCA Junior Police Academy. We try to get kids involved in after-school activities. We also understand that we really can't do it alone. It is a community effort. 
we need those calls to keep coming into the police department. We all have to take ownership in this community because uh, with uh, 600 officers, we, we simply can't solve it on our own. So we're asking for your help. We're asking for your partnership. I see the passion. I feel the passion. And, and we do hear you loud and clear. The way we go about doing our business has to be in a way that's reflective of our community standards and we can accomplish we can accomplish the task of making our communities safe by when we do have to use force it has to be reasonable it has to be necessary and it always has to be with respect and we can do that and we can do that in a way that we still lock the bad guys up and I can tell you as a police officer that used to patrol Pan Avenue I know that we can lock the bad guys up and still do it with respect and within community standards. Thank you. But I will tell you this, if you get a hold of the right person, I want to tell everybody this here, if you're not happy with the service you get from the person you talk to, then you call back and you talk to one of my command staff. And I guarantee you that someone will call you back. I guarantee you that someone will take action, but you have to call the right person. Now, we got into before, ma'am, you called and you called the Emergency Communication Center, and you said that people were rude to you. Um, but if you have investigative questions, we're going to take a look. That Those calls have to come to the right person we in the police know. department. As a citizen, we don't know who to call. Right. Exactly. Call 911. No, not and, for a directory service. Right, and 911 center should be able to tell you that. There's two things immediately that I, I would ask you to do, is when you call, you can tell the call taker you want to see the officer. They will respond and they will come see you. If you don't get a response for some reason, you call back and you ask to talk to one of my supervisors. All right. All right? Now, the, the, the other piece of that is, and, and the chief alluded to it, um, Ramsey County Dispatch handles the triaging of calls. And I'm not trying to, to uh, push off on another agency, but there is a hierarchy of priority of calls, and it goes into a pending queue, and they're dispatched in the order uh, of priority, and then the next order of receipt. So if it's a, a crime in progress, uh, accident with injuries, it goes to the top of the pile, and if it's a property damage accident, it could well sit up to 30 minutes. So there are some administrative issues, because we've only got so many folks to handle so many calls at a time. Um, but with regards to the first part of it, you should see somebody, and if you want to see them, they will be there. And if not, if you talk to me when we get outside, I'll give you my cell phone number. Information there, uh, <clears throat> definitely. Uh, but the thing you need to know, when you call 911, and this is what I gather from the meeting, and this is why I, what I liked about the meeting, is that there was this give and take and back and forth, and and uh, you, you definitely saw that there was a communication process. Uh, and it's the same whether it's the high level of government or the lower levels of government, uh, like out in Crystal. The, the police chief was not communicating with the city manager and the city attorney as to what was going on in her department so that the city manager wasn't telling the uh, uh, city uh, mayor and city council members what they needed to do to fix the situation you know but of course in in my opinion the uh, city manager there or the police chief there was not communicating on purpose because she was part of the problem well if a, a police officer may not communicate to their uh, person higher than them the sergeant or the commander uh, because they don't want them to know what's going on they don't want them to know how they're dealing with situation and there's a trust issue back and forth going on and, and of course that's the human process but you what you need to do is of course call 911 and then if you want to talk to the police officer you ask and you tell that 911 operator I need to talk to the police officer otherwise they may not talk to you at all you know they just come assess the situation and then take off um, and I, I've seen that happen and in a car accident situation where I almost got hit uh, and I made the call into 911. The police officer came, talked to everybody but me. Um, you know, even though they had my name, I was standing around. You know, but I also saw that he assessed the situation and and was dealing with it, and uh, uh, really didn't need my input. And they had cameras around the place, so um, 
but so why does he need to talk to you? You know, so if you want to talk to the police officer, uh, he or she, you need to talk to, call the, uh, uh, tell the 911 operators, I, I want to talk to the officer. Now, if you're not getting treated right by the officer, you need to then call the command staff. And this is what they're saying. This is what we're getting here. And then if uh, the command staff isn't doing their job and you're not satisfied, there's the police civilian review board and or uh, there was another group he named and I, I, I missed that. So uh, that's what you need to do. Okay, caller, we got another caller here. Thanks for calling in. You have a comment or question? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you a couple things. You know, I can see the frustration on those people on the east side. I had an accident where a lady hit me and knocked me all the way across the road. And I was happened to be down by the Hamsbury, down there where the oh, police station is. That's right where we, the, yeah. Yep, we pulled over and stopped, and I tried to get in that place to try and get a cop's attention because I followed the person that hit us, and I knew exactly where she lived, and we couldn't get in the place. It was totally locked up. Nobody would answer the call. We went over by the fence. We were just taking and saying something to the officers that were in it. It was during a shift change, and none of them wanted to talk to us. They said, call 911. And we called 911 three times before we got anybody to show up down there. So I can see the people's frustration down there. It was pretty bad. Then one wow. other, other comment quick I wanted to make about as far as these kids go. A lot of these kids know that they're just, you know, nobody can touch them, basically. Their parents have no rights to touch them. The school districts can't do anything to them. And all that's a whole other issue that, you know, people don't want to talk about anymore but jeepers, cripes. You know, I mean, when you let the kids run roughshod over everybody, including their parents, and can hit a parent, right. but yet you can't touch your kid, what's right. wrong with that? Uh, and I got, there's one other comment somebody wants to make here quick to you. Sure. <laughs> line them all up. <laughs> hey, Tim. Well, Hi. I'll tell you, your, your lines are so busy, we got to get in when we can. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, well, I wanted to just make a quick comment. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I've i been tra trying to get the city council to consider making, um, you know, opening up our fire stations because they need to be open. We need our fire stations. I want to get police precincts in each of our fire stations. going to save some money for the taxpayers. That's the goal. Right. The other thing is um, it, it would be more coverage for the city. It would be a better use of our facilities and our personnel. Uh, the city council recently had taken money that they were supposed to put for to get new policemen on our street, new officers, and instead of funding positions, they decided to add on to city hall so the police would have more outlets to plug in their tasers and stuff. Yes. Okay, that's a misuse of, of yeah. funding for officers. The other thing is, this weekend on September 1st at 156, there was a posting by the Maplewood Police Department on Facebook. I don't know if you saw that or not. No. But what it said is, it's shaping up to be another busy weekend. Maplewood police officers have stopped stolen cars, arrested suspects on domestics, had a car chase, and responded to numerous other calls. If you've called us for service and had to wait, please be patient. Our response is dictated by the priority of the call. We are trying to get to everyone that needs assistance as quickly as possible. Now, isn't that nice? Do wow. you, as a taxpayer, find comfort in this message? Uh, no, not not at all. Uh, and plus, uh, let's go in deficit about 250000 a year for the community center. Uh, it's just wrong priorities uh, all, all the way is. together. Of, of course it is. And the other thing is, you know, I, I was at that meeting at Arlington Church. Yes. And, because it's an issue. We have a strong gang presence in the city of Maplewood. Oh, okay. I am a, I've been a block watch captain, a co-captain with my neighbor for 15 years. And we have contacted Chief Tamala and mentioned about all the tagging, which, of course, he denied was gang tagging. You know, it doesn't take rocket science to see that. <laughs> and it's all over the city. And yeah. he did nothing about it. It was on streets. It was on bridges. It's everywhere. And, and we are not, the east side is not a community. Maplewood is not a community. We are a community together. Uh-huh. 
That's right. You know, we have a really extensive trail system that right. that reaches and, and combines our neighborhoods. And the bus There's line. There's a lot of crime. That's an avenue of crime, the trail. Yeah. There's a lot of violence that takes place on the trail. We know Ooh. that. And we need to work and partner with St. Paul, with the east side, and other surrounding communities to, to get some plans in action and get some results, some positive results. Yeah. It's not going to take just the police. It's not going to take just neighbors. The burden is on the community. It is yep. on the community as a whole. That's and right. And everybody's got to get together. That's right. So and I, and, I, and we got to hold people accountable who were paying to help with these things. That's what we're paying for. Absolutely we do. And well, I well, want to thank you, Tim, and I'll yeah. let you get going because you've right. got so much information and we need to hear and, it. And we're running Thanks. out of time. <laughs> but I appreciate your call. That that was Margaret Barron. She's running for city council, who I uh, strongly endorse. And in my opinion, you just heard why. Uh, <laughs> because she's smart. She's uh, She knows what's going on, has the right answers, will hold people accountable, will... Um, uh, and we got to get rid of uh, Kathleen Juniman. Uh, there's just just no way around it. We can't have her there. We need to reelect Beck, Rebecca Cave, and we need to uh, get Diana Longry in as mayor. Um, these are nice. These are nice women. These are decent people uh, who understand the human condition and understand. Uh, the right solutions to the problem. And I guarantee you, as that one man suggested, uh, they will get communities, communication in the communities from the police officers, from the mayor, from the city council, so that you as a citizen can go and communicate and engage and enjoy each other and help people out, uh, lifting, the, <laughs> lifting the tide, lifting lifting people up rather than just the drag out and oh, I'm just here to do my job and get some retirement down the road and you know it, which some of our police officers have said uh, in, in the higher positions uh, so uh, yeah thanks for the call it was good information um, we're gonna show the next video here on uh, um, Mayor Coleman uh, what he had to say about economic development. So uh, if we get that video going, uh, and then we got another phone caller, but we're running out of time here. So we'll, we'll try to get them both done because yeah, I still have my closing comments to make. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's the video. No sound. With the, uh, with the uh, Salem Boulevard, uh, and we've seen as a result of that, we've seen new housing going in. We've seen Kendall's Hardware Store, that is uh, one of the best new uh, businesses in town. We've seen Ward 6, which is you know one of the best restaurants in the Twin Cities. Uh, we've seen, as a result of paying, uh, the Phelan Boulevard, we've seen jobs coming in on the east side at Health Partners. We've got the new jobs coming into Ham's Brewery. We've got a lot of investment. Taxpayer paid for those things. And you live in St. Paul, your tax bill is paying for those buildings. A lot of money. I know one deal in, in the Hams Brewery, uh, $5 million, uh, a grant given to a company to go in there. Uh, I also know uh, that Kendall Hardware costs a lot of your taxpayer money to move them uh, from higher in Payne, Payne in Maryland down to... Uh, Payne, uh, just north of where the, the police station is. A lot of taxpayer money. And where that hardware store was, now there's a, um, they're building this uh, youth center. Of course, they closed a number of youth centers in order to build this one. And uh, that economic tax spending money like that for businesses does not work. It does not improve character, okay? It will, it will never happen. All right, we're running out of time. We do have a quick caller. Caller, you got to make it very quick here. Uh, go ahead. Good evening. Well, when you talk about economic development, uh, maybe uh, Chris Coleman can go along with Mayor Ryback when he goes to Chicago 
and then to uh, Colorado and then Wisconsin to recruit uh, gays to come to uh, Minneapolis or the Twin Cities to uh, get married. Um, you know, maybe while Ryback's down there in Chicago, he can tell them about all the social service programs that Minneapolis is a fort, and then maybe he can go to Gary, Indiana, and Detroit, Michigan. I'm sure he could recruit a lot of people there, too. You know, the, the yeah. issue becomes that uh, the legislature passed this gay gay marriage law. The, the voters, the citizens didn't. And if this would have ever really gone back, the citizens were, were lied to about the law that was on the book would yeah. keep the uh, traditional marriage in place. So let's have your comment. Thank you. Well, it's not what we were talking about on this show, uh, but the, the I think the point there is that they're spending all this time dealing with issues that have nothing to relate to public safety. They're building these buildings. They're spending millions of dollars on lack of freedom of association, uh, where they're building the ballpark, um, and you can't even go to it uh, unless you pay, uh, where, but you're paying for it anyway and you still can't go. This is the problem that they're not focusing on what their job is to be, and that's public safety and, uh, and roads and these other partnerships shouldn't be involved in. All right, well, I, I'm not even getting to my clothes here <laughs> as to uh, what the solution is going to have to watch next week. Remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week. Oh